All right, well, it's October. The spooky season has officially begun. I mean, it's been spooky season for a couple months, and as a, as a as a goth kid, I maintain that it's spooky season all the time. But like now is the the real home decor shopping experience, like shopping period. So like we're getting down with the spooky. Um, doing some stitchy updates. It is the 7th of October at the moment um, because I was busy last weekend and couldn't film. I don't remember what I was busy with but there was busyness. Um, yeah, no, there was stuff going on. Um, so for people who don't know me, my name's, well I go by Gothy, um, but my name is Raven um, and either is fine. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm a disabled trans stitcher from Australia, and we, we get by here. We, we start a lot of projects. We sometimes finish some projects, but mostly we start stuff. Um, and we have a crow brain, uh, that just like shiny things. So, yeah. Um, I guess I will get into it. I'm just like looking around and thinking like I don't remember what stash I've shown or what stash I haven't shown. Um, I've been pretty good with the stash acquisitions. I have, however, been on a start like new project um, kick because basically I went through my stash and I decided that I was going to start a whole bunch of patterns. Um, at the moment I am restricted to just starting patterns that are digital, um, either ones that I can work off PDF or that can be put into Pattern Keeper because my printer has died and I need to go and replace that before I can start any of the kits or like physical patterns that I've got in Stash um, because I like to work off working copies. Um, it's very few that I would um, consider doing without a working copy. So physical start, like physical pattern starts are on hold for now, but basically um, last month I put together a big list of projects that I can start, assigned fabrics to them, like sort of kitted them up, that kind of thing. Um, so the plan is from now until the end of December, I have a whole bunch of kitted up projects that I can start and that is going to help me get through December because I I'm a bitch with trauma um December is really really difficult it I get the seasonal depression I get all the trauma stuff um and it's just generally just a really hard time of year so any way that I can get serotonin I will take and for me that's usually new starts um that being said though, I have been working on whips, so I've been meeting all of my whip go goals, um, and I realise I didn't grab one of them out. Alright, we're back. Um, so my whip go goals for September, I had two whips, one was Voodoo and Violet, which was for 500 stitches, and I I did show this in my last video because I also filmed a couple of days into September, and by that point, because Voodoo and Violet had been called for um, August as well, I'd already had that project out and had already stitched extra stitches, so I'd already completed that goal. But I will show it again now because, yeah, um, Voodoo and Violet lives in this cats and snakes bag um so my bags are all from the same person uh from deb's threads designs on etsy um who makes them in between their tape classes like like while they're also studying at tape um but yeah this is where this project at this is a mini uh the designer is or well, the artist is Jasmine Beckett Griffith, Griffith, we almost got it, um, and it's charted by Hayde, and it's a mini, so that's where we got to overall. That is now at 10%, so that is kind of exciting. 
Um, it's kind of funny also because I started this project with a friend um, and she finished it. She, she finished it years ago. <laughs> she finished it within like six months, I think. Six to eight months. Um, I've had this for years. We, we don't, we don't finish projects around here. That's, that's not what we do. Um, but yeah, that, that was the call for August and September. The other project that was called, as I put this back into the bag, uh, was the wolf kit. Now this one doesn't have a stitch count goal. Um, which actually ended up being really good, which is because that's the thing that I've been testing for next year. Um, so for next year, my whip go is not going to have a number goal against each of the things. Um, it's just going to have a thing of pick it up and work on it because I feel like what ends up happening is that like if it picks a project that like when I pick it up, it doesn't give me much serotonin or like it's just not super fun to stitch on for an extended period of time if i haven't met that goal i start to get anxious about it because i'm like no no but that's the goal that's the goal um and the problem with that is then i feel obligated to stitch on that and only that even if it's not if i'm not enjoying it or it's not tickling the brain meat so then i don't stitch on anything else <laughs> at all because it's just like no but i need to do this so what i'm gonna do is the goal is just gonna be pick it up work on it until you don't want to work on it anymore and then we we put it away and then if i've worked on both whip go pieces and you know i'm happy with where they're sitting i touch them both then i can start using my wheel again because i do also have a wheel uh, that i like to use um, and I haven't been able, I haven't done that that much this year, but yeah, this was the test piece. I put, I put the wolf kit on there and the goal is just work on it. And I got a lot more done than I thought I would. Um, so this is a kit. Um, I'm stitching this on the kit Ada with the kit, uh, with the kit floss. Uh, so it's the gold collection petite dimensions wolf. That's what it looks like. And this project stopped giving me serotonin a long time ago. So like the the first time this one got picked up, which was May, um, I had a num like I had a goal. I was gonna finish the face. It didn't end up happening because like the more I tried to force myself to work on it, the more I hated it. Whereas this time, because my goal was just work on it. I got so much more done and like there'll be there'll be a picture of like the before and everything but this is where we got to that that bottom half is all done like we we have we have background we have background and like outside of a couple of stitches here like there's three stitches here that haven't been filled in yet but outside of those three most of that is done like yeah it's it's wild like i got a lot done i filled in a lot of spaces i got a heap of that background in like yeah i'm i'm actually really happy with the way that that one went um i'm still not a huge fan of working on this project but i've worked on it for longer than i thought and I think because I could see that progress coming and because I didn't feel pressure to like hit a specific goal, um, that definitely helped. But I got so much done. I'm happy with that. So then for the rest of the month, I just stitched on whatever, which ended up being a lot of new starts, which I will go through. Um, whip go for this month for October is new start. <laughs> Um, so new start got pulled, so I'm just going to put an S at the end of that and say new starts because that's the vibe. Um, and then a thousand stitches on almost time. So this one is artwork by Victoria Francis and it is charted by Tilton Crafts. This lives in this bag here with moths and bats, also from Deb's Threads. And this one... 
has not had a lot of work on it overall. Um, what we have done, it's, this is the starting point. That is how big it is. There's some fabric that I need to cut off at some point, but this is where we'll be starting from. This is, this is, I'm doing this one in Pattern Keeper because I switched all of my very big pro projects to Pattern Keeper. My tablet needs to be charged. Um, that is the stitching I did last night, so let's just go back at that. Almost time. Ah, so this has got... This is 6,331 stitches, and it is 4.69%. Nice. <laughs> um, so we'll do some more work on this. Um, and just for, just for stats sake, the mini Voodoo and Violet is at 7,577 stitches, and it is 10.01%. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. So this is where we will be picking up from here. I don't know, I don't know which part we'll stitch, um, but we'll get there. We'll get some work done on this one. Um, I'd like to, like, I have the, I have a little bit of a, like, mental goal of trying to double the amount. If I can get 2,000 stitches on it, that would be really good because this project hasn't seen a lot of love since I've started it because I did start this a long time ago. Um, I this is this most of my big whips, my really big full coverage whips, have been on the go for several years. Um, it just happens that I picked a lot of patterns that have a lot of black in them, or like. It's the thing with full coverage. Black is never just black. Black is usually like a bunch of different colors um, to make it look black. Um, but because I did do a lot of big pieces that have a lot of black in them, um, it can be a little bit uh, frustrating to stitch on them if I'm just like picking them up back to back because it's a lot of the same colors at the moment. But that's fine. All right, now I'm just organizing myself. So stash-wise, I don't have a lot. Um, trying to think, what did I get? Yeah, okay, so those came with this, that came, yep. All right, so I do have a couple of pieces of fabric, a couple of patterns. The main thing is I got some 25 count easy guide because I didn't want to go bigger. And this is for a specific project. This is a big piece. Um, this is for the Phantom of the Opera, um, quick stitch supersized from Heaven and Earth Designs, um, because that is on my list to start. <laughs> so this is a massive piece of fabric. This is 140 by 100. Um, I don't even think, like, this is going to be a massive piece. Um, yeah, like... I'm not going to be able to get back far enough in my room to show the entire piece of fabric. Um, it is massive. It's going to be massive. Um, <laughs> it's a little intimidating, um, but I went 25 count. It'll just fit on this piece of fabric. Like, it's just on one side, I will only have like an inch and a half allowance instead of two inches. Um, which is the minimum that I try to have on all of them. Um, and that's just because I didn't... I've never done a full coverage not on Ada. And I didn't want this one to be the start of that. Um, and for me to pick like a 28 or 32 count or something and then hate it. Or have a really bad time stitching it. So I went 25 because it'll fit on there. It'll be tight, but it will fit, and I, I'm i okay with 25 count. Going to be doing it one over one full cross, as far, like, at the moment, that's what the vibe is. Um, and then just to sort of make up shipping, I got a few um, little bits and pieces that I needed. Like, I just got um, 
it's up here um it's like just a little thing and it sits on your finger you can use it to pick a bead up as well um just because sometimes like i use a tacky bob um but sometimes if i've only got like a short length on my needle uh the tacky bob gets a little frustrating to use um and because my hands can be a little bit shaky so that might help me with that um and then i also grabbed this pattern just because this looked really cute uh so this is galliana designs this is perfect friends and they're just like a bunch of cats something a little bit different um but an opportunity to use a bunch of uh, hand dyed flosses which i can always use an excuse for and they also had the gothic light by barbara ann and i've been looking at this for ages and i know i can get this digitally um but because i was buying the piece of fabric anyway and i wanted to make it worthwhile for the shipping i did that um and then from a facebook de-stash group i got two patterns so this one is neon nocturne by bad stitch it's so cute um so i got that one and i got this one from stitch sprout as well so yeah those, i just got those off a, a d stash group and then i have a couple of pieces of fabric did i show the fabrics i feel like i might have shown the fabrics because they came on the cusp of like they came somewhere in between um so i feel like i might have shown them but we have a piece of rocket queen in 16 count um i'm trying not to make them crinkle too much probably failing um oasis which is just a blue this is in uh 16 count as well um gold digger old map style in 16 count um these ones are always really pretty um actually color cascades have got these new um I dye ones so good i need to order some at some point um this is 18 count in blackbird in opal ada this is the new colorway um and then this is just regular gold digger in opal that is also 18 count that's considering pulling those out but then i'm just like no that's a lot of work and then i have to put them back in at some point like they're sitting up the top because i need to i do need to take them out and photograph them and put them into my um, fabric catalog but that will happen eventually i'm not in any kind of rush to do that but now we have our new starts so it turns out i bought two or two bags that are the same design from deb threads um so i have this i have one of these holding a big project so i thought this would be perfect to hold some of my smaller ones um now one of these is a was a whip already so that's the flossy fox stitch along which i am going to try and do some more work on this month because i have a feeling it's going to like oh well, it's not even a feeling it's going to be called sometime in the next little bit to be finished it's not on my board. Huh. Oh no, okay, I see what's happened. So it was on the board to be finished in January, but January was when it was still being released. So I finished it up to the point where there was no more. And then it's just kind of been sitting there and I've only got it on there once. Okay. I mean, look, that's fine. Huh, I hadn't realised. <laughs> Basically, like, there are, with almost time and the last new start being pulled today, the last projects that I have on my WebGo board, I have my Big Arthur's project, Mini Ravenkin, the Besna one, and my Tank Girl. Um, so those will be the last four projects that WebGo gets me to work on. Um, which gives me a lot of freedom to work on all of the new starts. And actually one of these is a start and finish because it was small. 
So we'll start with what's in my hoop at the moment. So this is the Raccoon Prophet, and this is this is a piece of fabric that I dyed. It's a 14 count, I want to say, off the top of my head. Um, and this is by Fine Frog Stitching um, off their Patreon. Um, I'll put a picture of what it will look like as well. But yeah, excuse to use some of these hand dyed pieces that I've had in my stash for ages. Um, basically, when I was still doing the pixel stitch, um, pixel stitch is like a that there was a pixel stitch RPG that was running in the Discord, um, and you would like create a character and like you would do monthly quests to level up that character and the quest would be like pick this kind of whip to stitch on or like do this kind of thing or research a designer and talk about which designs you which designs you like and stuff um it was really fun but it kind of just like petered out towards the end there so like um it's not super active now actually i don't think it's active at all um the discord still is um but the actual rpg just kind of with it out there um but one of the things for the one of the quests for that was to dye some fabric so i just went through my stash and got a bunch of pieces of 18 and 14 counter eight that were in my stash and a tie-dye kit from Sweatlight, and i just went ham um so yeah there are a bunch of like tie-dyed pieces in my stash um this is another one that i've started on a um one of those tie-dye pieces, so this is a self-dye as well. Um, very cool piece. I, I purposefully picked this spot um, to work on, um, but this is Spooky Little Crow with a little hat, and I need to pull up the pattern details for this one because it's gone out of my brain. I had the thought, the thought is gone. I looked at the pretty fabrics and my brain's just like, oh, pretty fabrics. And that's, that's where we're at. All right. So this is Jack Crow Lantern by Needle Lot Designs. So this was my start. These are all going to just be like mm -hmm. small starts. Someone is sending me messages. I remember to turn the ringtone off this time. <laughs> Um, so that, these are just going to be small starts for the most part. Um, this one is, um, it's just the Invisible Illness Club. And it is by, oh god, this is going to be a whole thing. I really should have, like, written them down done all this but that would that would be a lot more prep than i normally do and i'm not used to doing that <laughs> so you just have to suffer along with me um uh, that's that one that's that one hat and keep up visible illness club it doesn't have the designer there. Okay, let me. I bought all. The... I bought most of these off Etsy, so I'm just gonna go back to Etsy and have a look at my purchase list. Uh, my fancy watercolors got here, and they're in the other room, so I don't have them like here. But oh my god, they are so good. Um, I got them from Ayul. Um, I've seen them on like Instagram and stuff a whole bunch and oh my god they absolutely live up to the hype they are astounding colors and I'm I'm very much going to be doing some um, some more coloring and stuff uh, because yeah okay so this is from Black Waltz Stitching um, so this is Invisible Illness Club it's gonna be a little hard to see because I picked a, a fabric, but I've stitched the ghost in um, glow-in-the-dark floss. Um, and yeah, this is again just a piece from Stash 
This one was not a self die. I found this on eBay. It is a, I think it's a 16 count. It's either 16 or 18, uh, 16 or 14. Um, but yeah, it is, it is just a random dyed piece that I thought was really funky. Um, and this is the Invisible Illness Club and there'll be a picture and everything. We'll do the thing in post. Um, so then this one is, this one is the Pride Frogs. This is a piece of fabric from Color Cascades. It's like an odd, they, they used to do a lot of like the odd shape kind of things, like remnant pieces and stuff. Um, so this is just half of one of those. I've just cut it down because this is going to be the, the, um, this is one side of it, so that the rest will go there. But these are all going to be little pride flags in the frogs. Um, and they kind of pastel -y, so like, the one that is finished here is the bisexual flag. So it is, it is a lavender kind of colour, it kind of gets... I'm... I, I would have liked... I might even restitch this and maybe pick some different colours. Um, once I finish the pastel version, uh, and just do some, like, really bright ones. But, yeah, we've got the bi flag going, we're getting the rainbow flag in the middle, um, and it's gonna have most of the pride flags, not all of them, because there's a lot of pride flags. Um, but we've got that one going, that's from Colourfully Sarah. Um, I've got a couple of their designs ready to go. Um, so this is another piece of fabric from Colour Cascades that is not showing up at all. But it is pink and orange. There's a lot more orange in it than showing up. But this is a start. This is a Witchy Stitcher Patreon pattern. This is one share. So it's going to be Adam's Family. And so I've started that one. Most of these are pattern keeper, some of them are not. So the gay frogs, the pride frogs, um, are not. Um, and this one is not either. So this is just a, a remnant piece of, um, I believe it's Swigart? No, Fabric Flare. Um, I got it off, got it off Color Cascades way back in the day, but it's just like a spiderweb piece. Um, so this is the Vampy Vignettes from Noctiflora Designs. Um, so we just have a start so far, the little mouth and the teeth and everything. I've not done too much on it. Um, and then we have, so this one we need to find the designer. Alright, so these two are both from Mama Witch Cross Stitch. So this is um, one of my newer pieces, pieces of fabric. So this is the Blackbird fabric from Color Cascades. It's in one of the newer ones. And I'm doing two pieces on here so far, but there's going to be space for three. Um, so this is the first one. This was a start and finish. Um, so this is just a little ghost on the toilet with his phone. Middle of the night, watching TikToks. That's, that's absolutely the vibe. Or just, you know, scrolling through Instagram going, oh, I want to buy that pattern and that pattern and that pattern. Um, so that's start and finish, and then this one is a start um, from the same designer, and this is going to be the um, Autumn Flower Ghosts. And then the other new start, there's going to be, like, this is a big piece of fabric again. Um, my headset just died. That is... Okay, I don't know. Uh, yep, so this is a big piece of fabric again. Um, this is Envy, I believe, from Color Cascades. Um, I want to say this is Envy, but like, the, the camera is not going to do this justice. Like, this is an absolutely gorgeous piece of fabric. I'm going to do two, maybe three projects on this one as well. This is a 20 count. So we have a small start. Um, but this is going to be Live, Laugh, Lobotomy um, from the Witchy Stitches Patreon. So that is the other new start. 
So we have lots of new starts. I haven't put them into my whip board yet because um, I, I use Trello at the moment to track my whips. Um, but yeah, we're going to get there. Basically, the way that I'm doing this is like I have all of the fabrics picked out. They are sitting in my, um, like, because I've got two boxes. I've got a box of stash, which is all of my fabric and a bunch of my kits. Um, and that sits on the bottom. And then I've got my active whips, my extra hoops, that kind of thing. And then some extra, some of the other kits and stuff that don't fit in the other box. Because the other box is very full. <laughs> um, basically, I've got all of those sitting in all of the fabrics for the new starts sitting in the whip box and I just go through and be like you know what this piece of fabric looks great let's start the one that I assigned to this one um or if I'm just like thinking about the patterns um I do that it's just it's very random oh well, that's pretty I looked at things and I probably shouldn't let's close that <laughs> let's close that I don't need more project bags at the moment we don't need it. It's fine. We're fine. It's not a thing. I want it to be a thing, but it's not a thing. It's going to be crinkle noises. I apologize. I'm just moving stuff around. Um, so, yes, we have a whole pile of fabric that I'm trying to just, I'm just trying to grab some of them now. I have to clean up a bunch. So here, here is a sample of the, the pile of start fabrics. And grab those. And we grab that. So, you know, like we've got this is a piece of storms on 18 count. It's a little bit darker than what it's showing. Uh, we've got just some like black ada. Black ada is always good. Uh, so this is another piece of Rocket Queen. That's yeah. It's probably a little. It's it's a bit darker. Again, I think I think I've maybe got my lighting up a little too high, and it's just lightening things a little too much. Uh, this is another piece of odd fabric. It just it has these really cool blue streaky bits yeah i want to use this part um for a particular project it's just a small one and then this one is stormbringer these these are mostly color cascades like pretty much if i'm showing fabric that is not just white ada it's color cascades unless i say otherwise um so this is cool uh, this is 18 count. This is a new colorway. This is a Halloween one. It's showing very blue, but it is, it's absolutely a green. Um, you would think my camera is used to like showing green up on camera, but no. Um, so I did pull two kits out of my stash, um, because I do want to start them, but I need to wait until I can make working copies. Um, so this one is um color cascade was doing a mermaid sale a couple years back and i got all the stuff I got the fabric and the beads um and the pattern it's by soda stitch so soda stitch um so that i would like to start i don't want to pull all of the stuff out and then also kitted up is um dragonfly fairy uh, it's Joan Elliott, and I've got a piece of fabric in there for it. So, like, again, working copy, and then do that. Um, these are two pieces. Um, there's one project that I put down, and I put down, like, mottled pink self-dye, and I don't know which one it is. So it'll either be this piece, or this piece. Um, and these, again, these are just 18 count. This is, yeah, this one's 18 count um, that I just did with that um, tie-dye kit way back in the day. 
Um, so these two don't have a specific project in mind for them. There are two projects that are monochromatic, so that being Flirtation by Long Dog Samplers and um, what is it Magic Over the Moon? Magic Under the Moon um, by Flossy Fox um, by Flossy Fox Shop that I want to do in like hand dyed flosses or silks. Haven't decided which one's going to be what, um, and I didn't. I didn't feel up for going through and just like picking a bunch of flosses now. So what I've done is I've picked two pieces of fabric, and we are going to go with whatever one is going to go on them. It'll f like both projects will fit on both pieces, so like size wise it's not a problem. This is a piece of forest. Um, that is, it's a lot darker again than what is showing um and more of that kind of foresty green um but it's fucking gorgeous and i want to use this fabric so bad the same as this piece this is a piece of at last oh, this is a purple blue um it's not it's not gonna be super accurate but like it's it's really modeled um, and you can see a lot of that blue come through the purple and it's just gorgeous. So those are the two pieces of fabric I just really want to use. So when I when I pick one of them, we're going to either pick Magic Under the Moon or Flirtation. We're going to pick some random flosses and we're going to just wing it. I didn't want too many like strict kind of choices. Um, so then this one is a mystery fabric. A mystery month um and this is gold digger old map style this one has a specific project in mind this is going to be the supernatural stitch along and that is showing a lot more white that that color is not picking up at all um but that's going to be the supernatural stitch along um and that is that fabric is very similar to what i've done the cryptid one on so that's why that's going to be that one uh this is a lucky dip ice dye which is basically just random and it's very pretty then we have a piece of clouds this is on opal as well oh my gosh yeah if we do it like that you can kind of yeah um this is this is Silver Springs. This is one of my go-to fabrics, honestly. Um, so it's it's very it's very versatile. Um, I always keep a couple of pieces in my stash of that one because it's just you can use it for everything. Um, and then this one is what's this one? Ice Ice Baby. So that is a purple, purple and white. We have Angel of the Morning, which has been in my stash for a long time, and like it is really pretty. It's not my usual sort of colorway. It's like a pink with like a bit of a gray through it. It's like a hint of like, I wouldn't say pink, maybe a peach, but like it's really pretty. I have been told to hold off on buying any of the ice dyes that she's just released because she has a green coming that she knows that i'm gonna like um so this is into the mystic yeah um so this is another piece that i've had in my stash for a long time that i just really want to use um i do have a bigger piece of this as well but i just want to use one of this one this is another piece of clouds is it yeah this was a, a monthly mystery mystery fabric which I haven't signed up for the new one yet. I'm I'm unsure if I want to. There's just some more black Ada. And this one. So I'm going to be doing two projects on this one. Um, so this is a piece of Black Hold Sun in 18 count. And oh, this is it's one of my favourite colourways. It is fucking stunning. look at all the fucking colors and just yeah 
it's it's gorgeous so i'm going to be doing two projects on that one um because i want them side by side and on the same fabric it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit there's not going to be a huge margin but that's perfectly fine honestly they're going to look so good on that too oh uh this one's dark fantasy it's a blue there's like little patches of like a green teal in there really pretty honestly like they're, they're my go-to for buying fabrics and for a reason um so i think this is another piece of into the mystic isn't it no this is aurora there is some okay so this is gorgeous gorgeous now i haven't pulled it out but i have also decided to do one of these new starts on vampire which is a 32 count that i've got in my stash i just haven't pulled it out yet so i don't have it out um because i haven't pulled it out this yet uh this is after the rain and this is opal on 20 count So, yeah, these are the ones that I've pulled out of my stash so far. They are destined for new starts, except for that one piece of Vampire, which I don't know when I'm going to start that one because it is, it's kind of full coverage, but it doesn't have a background. Um, so I'm just not sure when I'm going to start that. I don't know when I'm going to start the Phantom piece um we we've got we've got a bunch of stuff there and we're, we're just gonna we're gonna go by feel um and hopefully we'll get more stitchy time um i do have a bunch of stuff coming up though like uh this last weekend i went to i took like me and my housemate went to see frankenstein um it was put on by shake and stir productions it was so good it was honestly so good and like their monster makeup and everything the book's gotten a little um the program has gotten a little funky because um so i had to put it in a bag with my jumpers and stuff but like it was done so well um and the guy who played the monster like frankenstein's monster did so fucking good um i'm just trying to see if there's a picture of his makeup there's not um the makeup was so good even from like because in this theater the wheelchair seats are right at the back and up the top um so you get a little bit of vertigo looking down because it's like straight down um but it was so good last weekend last weekend was the zoo that's what i did last weekend i went to the zoo with my partner their partner and their partner's partner um plus one of their friends as well um so we went to sydney zoo because that's close by to where i live had a little bit of a time getting there because the bus driver dropped me off at the wrong spot and there's no footpaths or like no way to just drive around the corner so I had to do a bunch of off-roading and it was a bit of a time. Um, uh, it was it was not fun. Um, so that is something that I need to bear in mind the next time I go there. Um, but I took my camera with and we had, we had a good time. Um, I bought new plushie, a dragonfly plushie. I have literally never seen a dragonfly plushie ever. So like this was mandatory. Like... I, I was going to get, like, they had some really cute bat plushies and stuff like that that I was going to get. But no, dragonfly wins. Dragonfly always wins. If there's a dragonfly, like, there's no choice. It's, it's going to happen. So I had the zoo, and then after the zoo, I went into the city to see Cradle of Filth, um, who were fucking awesome. They were so good. Um, and then next weekend... <laughs> so next weekend on friday like friday this week i'm taking the day off 
I'm taking my partner and my metamor to see Sunset Boulevard uh, with Sarah Brightman because my meta loves Sarah Brightman as well so like I was like fuck it let's do it and they had like this deal where you get dinner included in the ticket price as well so dinner and a show um, which is really good because with the wheelchair seats because both me and my meta more um, are wheelchair users uh, we don't pay a lot for the tickets at all so it works out to be like 50 bucks each um, to go see like a like to go see an opera and we're sitting in the same section where tickets are like usually like two hundred dollars so like it's really cool um so we've got that on friday and then i've got my goddaughter's birthday party on saturday and then on sunday is range day and i'm also fitting in a date night with my partner in that time frame as well And at some point, I also need to contact the other person that I'm dating and work out what we're going to be doing. What is that one? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's another thing. October's going to be a little busy. Um, November. Do I have any gigs in November? I don't know if I do. Because one of the other gigs that I had for October has been cancelled. Um, so it was cancelled and that makes me really sad because I was going to see um, the band called Cold and the band called Orgy. <laughs> um, and like Orgy is one of my bucket list bands. So that's, that's out now. Um, so they had to cancel because they've had some um, injuries and stuff. So yeah, that makes me sad. Oh, but I, I'm trying to make myself read again, too, because I don't really talk about books a whole lot. Um, but I did, I have gotten a bunch of books from the library um, that were going to make an attempt to read. I'm just going to grab them. I should have, I should have pre-gamed this, but I didn't, because I didn't think about talking about books. Because I haven't really talked about books a whole lot lately. So yeah, just give me one moment. All right, we're back. Now, a lot of these are going to be smart. <laughs> They're going to be smart because I have been, like, smart has been, like, the thing that is sort of slowly pulling me out of the reading slump that I've been in the last couple of years. So some of these are smart, some of these are not. So I'm going to try and work it in. So this one was out of my normal. So this is Priest by Sierra Simone. I've actually finished this, so it needs to go back. Um... I'm not going to read the other two because there's two more in the series. I'm, I'm just not going to read them. Um, the Spice wasn't bad, but I didn't super enjoy the storyline part. Like, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't, like, in-your-face religious either, despite the title. Um, but it's not... it wasn't horrible. It was okay. The spice was nice. Um, yeah, like I think the thing that gets me about smut is like the beginning and middle are really spicy and smutty, and like you you get that really well. But then like it feels like sometimes that the genre as a whole has this thing where it like tries to wrap up the story really quickly, so at the end you don't get as much spice or anything like. You, you just get a lot of wrap up of the story but it feels really quick and like oh shit like I forgot about this part I need to finish this up and I find that there's a lot of smut that does have that kind of thing it's like you get really good smut in the first part and then the middle and then you just get this like rushed close up of the storyline with very little of the smut where like you would think you would see kind of like a progression of that Look, it's... I am complaining about this one. Um, so then this one, I don't know anything about it. I, I basically just, like, went onto my library's website um, and just put a, res a reservation down on a bunch of books that, like, um, 
so like this one I have had recommended to me so I was like all right let's see if the library has it and then from there I was like what what do you have that's like suggested or like similar to and I just put like a bunch of reservations down so this is one of them as well the dark king um this is a movie that I've been wanting to watch for a long time blue is the warmest color it's a sapphic movie so we're going to try that one. Um, this is another apparent smut. Um, it's like a fantasy smut. So, you know, very smut. Um, this one is, I mean, I know the author and I know she does a lot of smut. So I don't know if this one is smut, but I, I imagine that it is. Um, it's fantasy romance though. Um, and this is this is the same author that's, that writes the Neon God series, which I do really enjoy. Um, so I have a feeling it's probably going to be smutty. Um, everything I've everything else I've read from her is smutty. There's also a vampire one that she does it's really good. It's like polyamorous vampires, which look i'm a sucker for i'm a sucker for vampires and it was actually like a really positive polyamory kind of thing too so like we're, we're all in for that but this one's pirates and fantasy so um and then this one this one just looked good it was just on the shelf when i went in uh dear medusa um this is not smart but i've had this one on my wish list to read for a long time um, and this is like a Mexican gothic, um, it's like a, it's, it's a vampire book, essentially, um, but, um, the author does a lot of, yeah, Mexican gothic. I've read one of her other books so far, um, and they're really good, so I know I'm going to enjoy that. And there's one that's in my housemate's fan still, um, I've got to get him to grab that out for me, because... There was a reserve that was there yesterday and I just didn't have the spoons to go down the library and grab it, so he grabbed it for me. Um, and then we've got this one which came up in the fantasy side of things. Um, and again, like, I just, I picked books specifically not knowing what they were going to be because I'm trying to just, like, will the intrigue and, like, the not knowing and stuff, not looking it up help break this fucking reading slump that I've been in for several years because <laughs> it's extensive and it pisses me off because I want to be reading because even though like I've culled my book collection down and I've swapped a lot of them to digital I'm still not even reading the digital ones um I have been trying to do some audiobooks as well while stitching um it just also happens that like I have so many things that I need to catch up on like I'm still really behind on Critical Role I did get another episode out I'm gonna try and fit another one in today we'll see how I go um but I did finish a audiobook um it's called Her Vigilante Her Vigilante by Lillian Lark it's smut it's smut <laughs> it's very much like FBI agent falls in love with the serial killer smut um but it was nice like questionable but like yeah like this the spice was nice the spice was nice like I said we're, we're going all in on the smut I can actually undownload that now um and I can Cool. All right, that's that's done because I finished that one now. Um, the next one that I have queued up, ready to go when I'm feeling in the mood to listen to an audiobook, um, is Entranced by the Basilisks, which is a monster romance, but also by Lillian Lark. Um, and that's that's where we're at. Like, <laughs> where I'm I'm, if Monster Smart encourages me to read. We're going monster smut. That's, that's the way it's going to go. But that is everything, I believe. I am planning to do some gaming today as well. I've got a few bits and pieces that I need to do in WoW. Um, but other than that, I think I'm just 
waiting for my bestie to wake up. Um, she she has a fucked up sleep schedule like I do, so like we 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 vibe on that one. And like daylight savings started yesterday, so like my sleep schedule's out the window. I went to bed at six o'clock this morning. <laughs> Um, I'm used to it happening, like every year it happens. It's not an unusual thing for daylight savings to completely throw my sleep schedule out. Um, so I went to sleep, I went to bed at 6 a.m. this morning, but I did sleep solidly for six hours, which is not my normal. Normally I'm up every couple of hours. Um, so, like, I feel okay, like I'm tired, I'm a little low spoons, but I'm not horrible. I'm not as bad as I was yesterday for sure. Um, but because I do have work tomorrow, because it's a public holiday today, um, in New South Wales. So I have the day of work, which is really nice. And because I've got Friday off as well, I'm only doing three days this week, which is going to be great. Um, <laughs> because work is a lot all of the time. And lately it's just been really busy. So yeah. Oh my God. I was just saying how I feel fine. <laughs> And then I'm yawning all over the place, so I'm going to go get caffeine, because it occurs to me I've not eaten, I've not had anything to drink, so I'm probably just, like, in need of food and caffeine, so I'm going to go do that. And then I'm going to edit this, I'm going to get it up, I'm going to try and get the Boxer Finishes video up as well, it's now been, like, two months. <laughs> um, but we're going to try this month, try and get it up get that extra video just so that it's done and I don't have to keep thinking about it um I just have to sit and edit it and that one's a little a, a lot more work because I've got to try and find all of the designers and link them underneath um and there's a lot in there that I've not I don't have the details of who designed them and stuff anymore so it's just going to take a bit of extra work and that's the part that I'm dreading um but we'll get there I'll get it, I'll get it there eventually. It'll happen. <laughs> um, but for now, I'm going to go, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to keep starting more projects this month. I'm going to get my stitchy goal done on almost time. And yeah, we're going to diversify that whip load. Because I'm down to like, well, until these like new ones, I got down to seven whips and six of them are full coverage. So... I need some variation. <laughs> that's not enough variation for me. So that's that's the, the other part of that. But I hope you enjoy October and everything gets suitably spooky. We are not talking about Christmas. We are not doing Christmas decorating. I mean, that's not a thing in my household anyway, but like the goth kids will hold this line. It is spooky month. It is spooky stitching month. Do all of the spooky stitching. And if you want to tell me what spooky stitching you're doing this month, go ahead, leave a comment. Or if you want to, like, share things, like, do it. I do have, I do have a Discord. Um, so if you want to, like, jump into the Discord, you can share photos or whatever. Like, I have different channels, so if you want to share pet photos or whatever, I have that. That is a thing that I have. It's just, it's not like an official... Like, it's not like an official YouTuber kind of thing. It's just a nice, chill social Discord just to hang out in. We sit in there and game. I'm planning to do some, like, crafty sessions and stuff in there, just sitting there and do that. Um, last night, up until, like, three, um, my bestie and I just sat in Discord and we just did some crafts and we were watching... Um, we were watching The Haunting of Hill House. Um she's watching it for the second time i'm watching it for the first time um just because like i've been going through the mike flanagan ones fall the house of usher fucking amazing so good so good and not just because it's like based off edgar Allan Poe stories but like it's just done really well and like the cinematography was amazing and the music choices were amazing and just the way they set it all up oh it's so good i'm absolutely like converted fan of Mike Flanagan like it's gonna be a thing I'm gonna watch Midnight Mass it's the next one that I want to watch but I want to get through um Haunting of Hill House first so yes we're getting there we're good we're good we're good um 
I just keep running off into different tangents, so I'm gonna leave. I will see you when I see you next. Probably next month. We'll see. Who knows?